So if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering, what's the catch? Why is this card only $500? Well, there's a complicated answer to that question, and it starts with an eBay auction I found while looking for a good deal on a 3090. I was scrolling through eBay, and I found a listing for an RTX 3090 that was listed as broken for parts, but I had a suspicion that this card might actually be in working order. Now, I've bought and broken cards in the past, and some of them have worked just fine for me, and I've also bought broken cards in the past that just turned out to be broken. So, it's fair to say that I've taken this gamble before, and I know what to expect if I just end up throwing away money on my new expensive paperweight. But, back to the listing. Um, speaking of the listing, it contained one blurry picture and a not-so-descriptive description. Item stopped working. Could be power supply issue. Has box and carrying case with it. No refunds. This was somewhat sketchy, but I thought, maybe it's in working order and it could just be a really good deal. After some negotiation, the seller accepted my offer of $500, which was a lot to spend on a card that was being sold under the assumption that it's broken. The seller said that it was detected by Windows and that it could update drivers, but would occasionally post video, but not consistently. And when the system arrived, I did turn it on and nothing happened. No lights, no fans, except for a power supply fan that did spin temporarily and then turn right back off. Unfortunately, I did not record the process of taking apart the eGPU system, so here's a clip from the short circuit video where they disassemble a similar version with the 3080. It's almost exactly the same as the 3090 version, except the 3090 has a metal backplate and it's a 3090 instead of a 3080. Anyways, here's a clip of what it looks like, and you can see they use a special proprietary power connector that you'll see in a second. And it turns out, yes, you can use the eGPU GPU inside of a desktop. So here's a look at what I got. So the RTX 3090 outside of the eGPU enclosure looks kind of bare. It does have the AIO on it and it has the power connectors still attached because you do need those to power it up. And these actually work with any power supply you already have as long as they're dual 8 pin or 6 plus 2 pin. The fans on the back I've swapped out to be fans with longer power cables and this does not actually have an I.O. bracket as you can see because the I.O. bracket was kind of built into the eGPU case. Um, this 3090 also has a metal backplate which I didn't expect because in the 3080 teardown there was not a metal backplate on the card. But it's a nice surprise. After pulling the card from the eGPU enclosure, all I had to do was transfer the PCIe connectors and plug them into my desktop and it worked flawlessly. So here's a few benchmarks, just to give you an idea of how the card performs. It's just a basic gigabyte card with an AIO cooler. For reference, my system is comprised of a Ryzen 7 3700X at 4 GHz, 32 GB of DDR4 at 3600 MHz, and the RTX 3090 you just saw. And for all these benchmarks, I'm cranking everything to the max settings except for motion blur, and running everything at 1440p native with no DLSS. As far as benchmarks, starting with a bit of an older game, Rainbow Six Siege. Even though the game is almost 7 years old, it still looks great and when all the settings are maxed out at 1440p you can get an average of 232 FPS, which is really amazing, especially compared to some of the other benchmarks you'll see in a second. Now, Grand Theft Auto V, despite being older than Rainbow Six, it still is not well optimized, and it performed significantly worse. When all settings were maxed out at 1440p, except for motion blur or anything like that, it got an average FPS of somewhere around 82. There were some areas dipping below 70, and other areas going above 120. So, it's kind of all over the place. And as I looked, this is kind of to be expected even with current gen hardware like a 3090. Moving on to ray tracing, as we play control at 1440p native with everything maxed, even ray tracing, without DLSS, we get an average of 68 frames per second. Not bad. And when we turn ray tracing off, we get an average of around 115 FPS. Again, not bad. 
So in the end, I'm very glad I did end up taking the gamble and buying this for $500, even though I could have just wasted $500 on a graphics card that just doesn't work. So I think this is one of the cheapest 3090s. It is not the cheapest, unfortunately, but it's still pretty cheap at only $500, especially in the current market of GPUs. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.